Chapter 3. Adjusting the Accounts Part 5. During this presentation, we will learn how to prepare adjusting entries for accruals. We have two types of adjusting entries, deferrals and accruals. We've already covered all types of deferrals, now we'll be talking about the accruals. In the accruals, we have accrued expenses and accrued revenues. Accrued expenses are expenses incurred because the company received the service but did not yet pay or record the transaction. So effectively, we did an expense but we did not pay yet for it. So the expenses are recorded before the payment is done. So expenses recorded before cash payment. Let's take an example. On December 31, we have rent owed or due, but not yet paid for $2,000. So our rent is due. We have to pay $2,000, but we cannot afford to pay it now, for example. So what we have to do is to record the expense and then pay it later. So what we do is we debit rent expense for $2,000 and credit rent payable for $2,000. Another example. On December 31, we have salaries owed or due, but not yet paid for $8,000. So my employees should be paid, but so far I don't have the cash to pay them. But that does not mean that I don't have to record my expense. So I need to record the expense and put it as payable. So on December 31, I put debit salaries expense for $8,000 and credit salaries payable. Interest expense. As we know by now, every note payable we have is subject to an interest. And this interest is expensed. Let's take an example. Let's say I have a note payable of $5,000 on November 1 with an annual interest rate of 7% and for the duration of 4 months. Let's draw the timeline. On November 1, I have $5,000 in notes payable and they are due on February 28. However, I'm adjusting my entries on December 31. So on December 31, I need to know how much is my interest expense. So I check my timeline and I find that already two months have passed from the four months. So I need to find the interest expense for the two months. To find the interest expense, I need first to multiply the total notes payable, which is $5,000, by the interest rate. However, if I just do this, I'll be getting the interest for 12 months because the interest is yearly. Whereas, I need the interest only for two months. So multiplying the 5,000 by 7% is not enough. What we need to, know, to do now is multiply the whole with the ratio of the interest yearly, which is 12, and the number of months that expired, which is two. And only then I will get the right interest expense for the period in hand which is $58.33. Now I prepare my adjusting entry. I debit interest expense for $58.33 and credit interest payable since the interest is not due yet. So debit interest expense $58.33 and credit interest payable. Accrued revenues are revenues earned but not yet recorded or even billed to customers. So in the accrued revenues, we already performed the service, so we have a revenue recorded before we receive the cash. So revenue is recorded before cash payment. Let's take an example. On December 31, we have services rendered to customers but not yet billed. We did not send the invoice yet to our customers. So what we have to do when we need to adjust the entries, we need to record the service and put it as a receivable. So what we do now is debit account receivable for $5,000 and credit service revenue. Another example. On December 31, we have services rendered but not yet recorded. 
So we did the service, but the accountant did not record it yet. So what we have to do is debit account receivable and credit service revenue by $3,000. Let's take an example. Calvin and Hobbes are the new owners of microcomputer services. At the end of August 2015, their first months of operation, Calvin and Hobbes attempted to prepare monthly financial statements. Prepare the adjusting entries needed at August 31, 2015. At August 31, the company owed its employees $800 in salaries and wages. That will be paid on September 1. Effectively, we have salaries due for $800, and we need to record this expense even though we did not pay for it yet. So we prepare the following adjusting entry. On August 31, we debit salaries and wages expense for $800, and since we did not pay for it yet, we credit salaries and wages payable for $800. On August 1, the company borrowed $30,000 from a local bank on a 15-year mortgage. The annual interest rate is 10%. When we borrow money, there will be interest. And since we are adjusting our entries, we need to identify the value of this interest expense and prepare an adjusting entry for it. But first, we need to know first the value of this interest expense. To find the value of the interest expense, we need to multiply the $30,000 by the annual interest rate. So we start by putting the whole amount, which is $30,000, and we multiply it by 10%, which is the annual interest rate. However, when we do so, we are getting the value of the interest for the whole year, while we need the interest interest for only one month. So what we need to do now is multiply 30,000 by 10% and then multiply it with the ratio, which is, since the interest is yearly, which means interest for 12 months, we put in the ratio 12 in the denominator. And since we're looking for an interest for only one month, we put on the numerator the number of months is due, which is 1. So we get the interest expense for one month, which is $250. Now that we have the interest expense, we prepare our adjusting entry on August 31. We debit interest expense for $200, $250, and credit interest payable for $250. Third, Revenue earned but unrecorded for August total $1,100. We have a revenue, but the accountant did not record the entry yet, or we did not bill it yet. So we have an accrued revenue for $1,100, and we need to prepare an entry to record this accrued revenue. So what we do is we debit account receivable for $1,100 since we did not get paid yet, and we credit service revenue for $1,100. This is how my adjusting entries would look like in my journal voucher.